This is Morgan Freeman, and you are listening to one of the most important podcasts ever made in the history of podcasting, The Pocket Party Podcast with my good friend, Darren Carter. Mm. And we're back. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Darren Carter, the party starter. We are going to call Mike Black. That's right. Mike Black. If you like the show and you want to show your support, every little bit helps. Go to DarrenCarter.com. I'm on PayPal or Venmo at Darren Carter Comic on Venmo. Also, I'm available on Cameo and also Jemmy. All right. Let's get back into the show. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pocket Party. Hello. Hello. It's Mike Black. Yay. Yay. It's... <laughs> We did it, everybody. We did it. We did it. Where he's here and he's ready to rock. I'm just fan, yeah, fan favorite Mike Black. Fan favorite Mike Black. I'm just gonna sit back and let him talk. No, (laughs) you already did that, and it was terrible. I know. Um, Like, yeah. By the way, I, I, uh, I, I don't know. I sort of rolled out of bed this morning and I looked and I saw that you had posted. Were you up really early, or did you go back to bed, or? I do whatever I want. Darren, (laughs) whenever I want to do it. I'm not married and I don't have kids. Yeah. And I give the whole world the finger. The whole world the finger. I just, whatever I want to do. You know, let's talk about the upside of that. You know, because this is, this. you know, Valentine's Day was on Monday. And I noticed that. You know what I mean? It's like, and I'm married, you know, I've been married 24 years. And uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of the people that likes to you know, post every, you know, you know what I mean? Like, Little. like here we are at the beach, here we are here, you know, I just don't. And it's sad because I, I maybe I'm gullible, which you already know that. And, uh, I, on, on some level, <laughs> but I've had, A little. I've had friends that were couples and then they get divorced. And I would tell my wife, like, I can't believe it. I, all those happy pictures, like it doesn't. And she's like, Darren, you know, so it's like, you know what I mean? Like, if they want to do it, it's doing it. Darren, just shut up. <laughs> shut up, Darren. Like, yeah, it's like, you know what I mean? I don't have, have you, you, I don't know. Are you ever shocked by that when you see all the happy photos of people, then you find out they're. You find out that they're what? Not, not happy or not divorced. Like, the, like there was. I assume yeah. they're not happy. I, I can't imagine the hellscape that being in a relationship is. Right, right. On a day to day. I, I, barely can stand myself in a 24-hour cycle let alone another person <laughs> yeah imagine if there was two mike blacks one was a woman and you're with her and you're just like Ugh. Okay. even let's let's yeah. say even let's yeah. add some incentive to it and make it a really hot female mike black <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which is, i would still find her tedious after about an hour <laughs> with three <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah Four hours in, I'm planning a murder. <laughs> you know, and, like, and like one or two, or, yeah. and I'm picturing we're like, going a whole day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, without one of us in the morgue. Oh, you God. know, like what happened? Well, what do you expect, foreigner? <laughs> we were together for 24 hours. Uh, people do that all the time. Well, people are wrong because <laughs> you shouldn't be able to do that. I was gonna uh, say, yeah, I was gonna say or like yeah. one or two or three, you know, little little Mike Blacks, little kids running around like Oh that I can't even No, no, no. <laughs> like, None of that Daddy, will be happening. What, what are these what are these action figures do? No, I, I've had those since the eighties. No, don't Just stay away from those yeah, yeah. Lester. No. <laughs> they start beating each other up with them like I don't know why I named him Lester, but Lester, Lester, yeah, yeah, you're gonna go old school with the old school names, you know. I hate Lester. Yeah, Philip, get over here already. Yeah, I know, right? He doesn't even exist, and I already hate him. Lester Black, get over here right now, this minute. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, it's funny you bring all this up because I wrote a tweet last night because I was just sick of it, Uh, and it must have been the one you saw, but it was basically about how all the happy couples need to shut it down now. So Valentine's <laughs> yeah. Day is over. I know. Uh, stop punishing the rest of us with <laughs> pictures of your fruit baskets and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> all, all the goodies that you won for being in love uh, that the rest of us don't have. Yeah. <laughs> Let us heal up for a year so you can do it again next I February. I know. I took my car into the dealership. See, then this is, to me, this is like, I swear to you, I was just like, this is real. Like, this is the kind of love that I, you know, my wife and I just, we just, we're perfect for each other. 
Like yeah. Uh, I was I called a bunch. So my my car need I needed to take it to the dealership to get you know to get service. There was the brakes and the blah 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 all that stuff, right? And uh, right. And uh, I thought, well, dang, I don't want to sit here at this place for like four and a half hours. So uh, my wife goes, oh, well, you know, well, me and you know my son was out of school that day. It was the holiday, President's Day. So we're like, let's go to Target. So we ran a few errands. Then we come back. We have lunch. And I'm like, this is great. Car dealership, Target, eating lunch that she prepared. This is perfect. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> your idea of a perfect day sucks. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like, and then <laughs> I called a say few, it again. <laughs> say those three things. Uh, well, it was a, per- <laughs> a a perfect Valentine's. I. I drive myself to the car dealership. I hang out for maybe 30 minutes and I'm like, enough of this. So I call my wife. She picks me up with our son. We go to Target. We wander the aisles doing a few errands. Then we go, we head back home. She cooks my son and I lunch. And by that time, the car was ready. So then we, what did you, what did you guys have for lunch? What do we have for lunch that day? Uh, gosh, it's, I want to say, oh, I know what we had. We had, uh, I think I had Super Bowl. I had pizza from leftover from the Super Bowl from the previous day, and uh, and uh, <laughs> exactly, and uh, maybe a few Target chicken wings. Yeah. Target and leftovers. I know. You I, round that out to your perfect day. <laughs> exactly. I know. I was like, yeah, hey, I'll have leftovers. I don't mind. There's still more Hawaiian <laughs> pizza. And, yeah, and then. I, but I do remember calling a couple of friends that day, and uh, one guy was, uh, it was later in the day, and uh, he uh, he's like, I, he starts whispering all weird and stuff, and he's like, I, I really can't talk right now, but uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm at a winery with my wife, and she's giving me that look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it turns out, and by the way, that's that's his third wife, so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so he you know. he should understand the look by now. Yeah, like, exactly. I know it's. Uh, I told you. I, know. I think on the third wife, he's really trying to make it work. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. There are. And, and by the way, and um, this is funny because nobody knows who I'm talking about. Apparently, they're already in. They're in. We're in therapy. They're in therapy. I guess they have, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he, like, uh, the problem is by now he is hypersensitive to the look. Oh yeah, so you know, like he's they say in the look when she's not even giving it. Yeah, he's like, he's like, well, part of the problem is she's always giving me the look, and she's like, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, the first, yeah, the first wife, he's like, you know, I have my own looks, honey. I'll give you a look, you give me a look. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't back down. And then the second wife, who knows? <laughs> and then the second wife, they were just like not even looking at each other. And then the third, hey, the third, yeah. third time's a harm. No, third-, third time he's like, he's like thinking of buying one apple. And then he looks at a different one and he feels her giving him the look, right. even though she's like four states away or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, uh, yeah. I mean, imagine that. It's you're... like that line in the reservoir dogs. You shoot me in a dream. You better wake up and apologize. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's where she is. She's like, Oh, <laughs> he, oh. he just calls her up every once in a while. Honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> For what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> I did. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. Uh... Yeah, he the way he whispered that I was just like, oh, thank God I'm not at a winery. Think I'm not dragged. Something I don't want to do. Like, but that would be a weird thing though to bring up to your third wife. Hey, honey, what do you have? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like my perfect I would think day. So. Hey, it's Valentine's. What do you have planned? Well, I thought I'd get my brakes and oil change at the dealership. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, honey. You don't have to drive me there. I'll drive my car there, and then uh, maybe you pick me up in about a half hour, and then, and then we'll go pick up some trail mix and some deodorant and. <laughs> Maybe a few cough drops and some other, you know, errands at the local Target. It will make some deodorant. <laughs> yeah, deodorant. For a nice romantic evening. Yeah, romantic evening, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, so that was our Valentine's Day. And, uh, and it actually worked. It worked out perfect. You know, we're, nobody, you know, it's perfect. We were happy and we finished the pizza and they, um, I think I ate most of the pizza. How about Super Bowl? What did you, did you do anything on Super Bowl? Uh no, I didn't. Super Bowl. I'm not. I mean, I yeah. I watched it and I stayed home and uh, ate and everything. You know, while I was watching it, I watched the commercials and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like, uh, um, you know, I'm not a major football fan. I kind of like, you know, when the Rams came back to LA, I was like, all right. And then, so, you know, my different you know relatives and people would give me these you know like rams clothes they probably got on the 99 cent shelf after they lost or whatever and so 
So I was super decked out like the first, you know, preseason the first year. Like, yeah, I got my Rams hat, beanie, you know, I'm going to be a football fan. And then I was, and I watched some of the pregames and then went and I would record them. But I thought, man, I don't want to waste a whole day inside watching this football game. Like, so I would just, you know, I'd record it. And then I would just fast forward to the boring parts by like the second and third game. And then I ended up just like fast forwarding to the whole thing and just watching this. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'm not a real football fan because, uh, you know, then I would then I would just start checking my score, checking the scores. And now I'm not I'm not even I don't know. But I do like the nice Super Bowl part. That part I like this. The actual the playoff game. I like the playoffs and the, and the actual Super Bowl. OK. Yeah, I'm not I'm not like uh I don't yeah. I I don't care about sports at all, but I'll I'll watch the last I'll watch the Super Bowl. And I watch it mostly for the commercials for movies and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh they have a lot of fun other sort of commercials. I thought the halftime show was fun. That yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh it, this was actually a good game though, so I didn't regret watching it because it was real close, you know. <clears throat> right up until the end, and also I liked that the Bengals were, were kind of like bad guy wrestlers. They were cheating the whole game and not getting yeah. caught. Yeah, and yeah. like I was like, this actually makes it more exciting because I don't want them to win now, but not out of any allegiance to LA. I just uh, want them to get, you know, to not not win by cheating, you know. And so I was just glad that it worked out where they didn't, you know. It made it a lot more dramatic than it could have been, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, they, yeah. I remember one play: the guy, the Bengals tackled the Ram, and then he kind of crawled around on the field like a tiger, like a Bengal. And I'm like, that's kind of a cool move. You know, like, <laughs> like, that's kind of a bad guy wrestling move, you know. I guess in a way, <laughs> it's a, also an interpretive dance move. <laughs> exactly. You know? Did you see the one guy? I don't know his name. Uh, he has a gray beard, and they said he's the. I think they said he was the oldest NFL football player. No, he is uh, forty. By the way, uh, was he a Bengal or a uh, Rams? And I was Ram. like forty. Wow. I'm like, dang, like that's yeah. Because it's funny because I was like, they showed him on the sidelines before the game, and and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> is that like a retired player? Like, and then I, I think at one point I referred to him as grandpa, and then they said he was forty, and I'm like, that guy's younger than me. Ugh. Like his life is over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, uh, he will not be coming back next season. <laughs> okay, I got a random question for you. Um, I, I, uh, I, uh, for some reason, oh yeah, that's what it was. I had a guest on a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of episodes ago, Kareem Matthews. Mm -hmm. And we were talking okay. about family feud and yeah. cause I just happened to watch that episode the night before. And now remember these, this, uh, family feud was filmed, I want to say in 1979 and they, right. either, it was either 77 or 79, but Hey, we're not writing a book here. All right. So uh -huh. they said, they go, how much would you pay a teenager to wash your car? And the answer, do you want to guess what the people said and what the number one answer was? A dollar. Yeah, the number one answer was one dollar. And uh, people are terrible, basically. I know, I know right? And it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, that was. Yeah, that was a dollar. And then. Kareem made a point. He goes, a dollar? Like, you couldn't even get any... Nowadays, you can't even go to the dollar store. You got to have a dollar twenty-five. Like, that's just a dollar, you know? So then yeah. I, I thought, well, let me call a couple of comedians, a couple of friends, and just see what they what they would say. But I'm going to... Uh, do you want to... I want to hear your answer before I tell you what... What would you... If you were to pay a teenager to wash your car... If, if it's a teenager, I would pay them in pizza. Oh, that's some Super Bowl leftover pizza? Teenagers love pizza. Everyone knows that. Oh, that's true. Uh, I would get them one of those Batman Pazones. Ooh, that does look good. That does look Batman good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a, like a Pizza Hut uh, gift card or something like that. And I'd go, take this, teenager, and wash the hell out of my car. <laughs> that's the most unique and, answer. I like that. <clears throat> and uh, and do something about that acne because it's, it's not going to go away on its own. <laughs> you just gave me... A bunch of coupons for pizza, and yeah. you're telling me to do something about my acne. Uh, I'm gonna roll up the window now. Now get to work. <laughs> get to work. I'll be inside <laughs> while you wash the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you sit inside? While they... I would sit inside and and watch them do it, and I <laughs> and I'd be the guy that you missed the spot there. 
Yeah, and, but how uh, can you tell? You're inside. I just know. I just know that's a tough spot. Yeah. Sir, that's on the inside of the windshield. You must do a lot of sneezing in your car. No, that's <laughs> impossible. <laughs> I remember I must have been about five years old, and I was with my aunt, and we went through a drive through car wash, and my God, that was like a scary experience for me. When you're in a car people, wash. Some people yeah. get anxiety from that, and other yeah. people think it's the best thing that could possibly happen to them. <laughs> I mean, as an adult, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like, do you know the comedian, more like a comedic writer, uh, Alexi Wasser? Uh, not familiar, but I will be. She, she is on Instagram, and she did a whole, like, live feed about her favorite thing, which was going through this car wash. And wow. it's because it, it's the kind that does, like, the whole rainbow-colored mm. uh, soaps and stuff like that. And she was like, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what a horrible life, if that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not as bad as Target and leftovers, but right. it's I know. pretty like, bad. I just remember when the soap was like hitting the noise <laughs> and all the soap, and then those things that come, those fringy looking things are hitting the, <laughs> slowly coming yeah. towards you. They're coming towards you. They're coming. Oh my God. Like, I was just, I remember I was in a, I remember the car. It was a Volkswagen bug, VW bug, Beetle bug. It was in the seventies, and it was frightening. And, Did uh, anyone go now? Roll down your window. <laughs> no, that, that would have been worse. The monster. We're gonna clean that. your head. I know exactly. That was uh, so. Here's some of the prices that uh, um, so Kareem, as we're Kareem Matthews, as we're in the middle of the podcast, he was like, he said he'd pay. Uh, he goes, he said fifty bucks. He'd pay a teenager fifty bucks. Fifty dollars? Come on. <laughs> that's what he. That's They're what only he, gonna buy crack with it. I know. And, then, and and Molly and whatever yeah, the other exactly. drugs are that kids are into now. <laughs> and then I asked uh, another. I would pay that much not not for teenagers, yeah. but for like a bikini car wash. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like, some, like college a, age bikini car wash, an a adult respectable car wash. age, right? Uh, like a female volleyball team is what I'm <laughs> imagining. Uh, if they were doing like a fundraiser for charity. If I knew that they weren't getting it, but that it was going to a charity I, and it was a bikini car wash, I would pay fifty dollars. Yeah, because I I started thinking like you could go to like a real like car wash for like way less than fifty bucks, or you could even do like the kind where you put, yeah. put the dollars in or whatever the quarters and hand wash it yourself for like seven bucks. Eight I was bucks. gonna say if someone said uh, we typically get fifty dollars here, I go well, I'm just gonna wash it myself over there. Yeah, exactly. You're like, well, I'm just going to pray for rain. Um, I'm going to yeah. drive to Pasadena, <laughs> hope there's another hailstorm. Uh, yeah. It's really not that important to me that I get it washed for $50. Yeah. And sometimes, doesn't it feel better if you, if I don't have time to wash my car or I just don't really have the desire? I'll, I've I've just like gone to the gas station and as I fuel up, I'll just clean the windshields. And there's something about having clean, clean windows. You feel like, wow, like this, my car is clean. <laughs> sure. Sure, you're like, I, I can't. yeah, I'm, I'm really not like you at all in, in yeah. the, the satisfaction you derive from yeah. clean windows. I like, oh, I know. I just, I'm, I'm sorry, but especially in LA when you're driving westbound and the sun yeah. starts to sunset, like right in the middle of the street, like the 10 freeway or whatever. And if, if the windshield's dirty, it's like, you can't even, it's so blinding. It's just the way it lines up. I, you know? I guess I, I don't. I avoid driving that way, I guess. I just go, oh, it's the sun's doing that weird thing. I'm going to go wait it out in a coffee shop or something. That's true. Because it does. I mean, that was one of those things I noticed even before. I, right when I moved to L.A. And people were like, oh, yeah, you got to watch the, uh, you know, the sunsets here are really weird because they're. Right yeah, the it's to me, it's too much of a risk because there's homeless and there's, you know, all sorts of other crazy stuff going on on the road right now. And uh, I'm just sure that I'll hit someone if the sun is blinding me too. Because oh, yeah. now it's like there's homeless and the like humongous bicycle lanes. Oh yeah, that it's just, it's just too too much to drive with that and competing with the sun like blazing into your eyes. You know, right, right. Uh, uh, at uh, night it's it's bad. Where like I know because the homeless out here, not to harp on that specifically, but like there's so many of them and they don't. They, you know, they're not they're, sure. yeah. they don't seem to be aware but that a lot of their clothes are dark and kind yep. of matted down yeah and they soak up light they don't reflect it 
So you can be like a foot away from a homeless person before you notice them. And you have just enough time to swerve and not hit them. And a lot of them kind of want to get hit because that if they live through it, they get to go to the hospital or right. you know, somewhere, you know. So it's, it is like a road warrior type nightmare. <laughs> and, no, I, I, have a, I have a friend that um, he's probably in his 70s, maybe, or he might be in his late 60s. And he has, uh, I don't know if he has cataracts in both eyes, but he Ooh. he's definitely mentioned cataract because he has some surgery coming up. And he was yeah. driving on, um, I think on, I don't know where he was driving, but I'm picturing Lancashire in North Hollywood. I think it was, you know, like mm-hmm. six months ago where there's all the, and he said the same thing, what you just described, a guy, dark clothes, and uh, he he has pretty quick reflexes. He used to be an athlete, and he hit the brakes, and he said he yeah. almost hit this guy, and he actually jumped out, and he goes, are you trying to get killed? And he said, the homeless person said, actually, I am. And it was like, whoa. Like, oh. that's just how I know. Wow. I know. <laughs> And he's like, yeah. well, hey, and he's like, talk the guy down and, you know, whatever, talk to him for a little bit. And, but that was just like, whoa, man. Yeah, that's and, rough. <laughs> yeah, because like you I'll said, just, may, maybe they're like, I'll get hit, I'll go to the hospital, something in my life, you know, whatever. But I'll just get back in my warm, safe car yeah, that exactly. I can afford to drive. <laughs> exactly. I have um, cataracts and a Cadillac. I, don't know. Yeah, I, was trying, oh. I was trying to be the next Eminem right now. But yeah. that's, you should have him print up business cards and say that. I have cataracts on a Cadillac. <laughs> they, the ladies love me. They, so here's what we got. The highest was 50 bucks, and then another comedian said, and I. it's funny, you, you sh- this could, might be a, a party question you could ask people because a guy that I know, he's always wheeling and dealing, and he's really he's from New York, and who he, says that anymore? Wheeling and dealing. I don't he's know. wheeling and dealing. I thought for sure his number would be a strange number, but he said twenty five. <laughs> he said twenty five dollars, and then I just asked a few more random comics, and they all said ten. So I think ten is what, like four people said. Well, is $10. it the the wheeling part of him that brought it to twenty five, or the <laughs> dealing part? That's like, yeah. I, I'm gonna get a great deal, twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. I know one comedian was just bitter, and he was like, "Cause I go, hey, I'm asking, because I, I go." I go, hey, I'm asking different comedians how much they ought to pay me to watch my. Exactly, comedy. he's like, he's like, he's more bitter against other comedians though. He's like, he's like, who cares what they, you know, no one cares if their Uber driver has a dirty car. Right. I was like, damn, dude, like Uber drivers, like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like gosh, relax, <laughs> relax, buddy. I see, you know, like, yeah, it's like okay, I'll just, I left it alone. I was like, all right, all right, this, but, um, they, uh. I saw a couple of, uh, I'm going to, there's a couple. Of... You didn't see nothing. No, I did. I saw something. What, I, hear, oh. I was going to say what I see. There was a couple of things I was going to ask you. Uh, so, uh, earlier We talked week... about movies uh, oh. the other day. Oh. Western stuff. Oh. Was oh. That what no, I was going to, uh, before we jump into that, to that, did you want to jump, uh, one of the, um, here's, here, I found it. So it said, I, I saw this little quick little blurb, a little, little fun fact. It said YouTube was founded after Justin Timberlake exposed Janet Jackson's nipple at the 2004 Super Bowl. The creators realized how hard it was to find a video online. Is, is this a true or false? I believe it's true. I believe it's true. I mean, I, you know, I read it and I just, I was like, oh, let me just bring that up. That I thought that was interesting that that's how YouTube came about. Like, these guys I don't were... think it is. Oh, you don't think it's true? I feel like we had YouTube way before that. Oh, well, no, I know, I know for, uh, well, here we go. I know for a fact, but I'm pretty, I'm, I almost know for a fact that YouTube came out in 2005. Okay. Here, I'm gonna, I'll Google it real quick. Cause I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it came out in 2005. What year was YouTube? Yep, February fourteenth, two thousand five. Wow, that is crazy. I would have thought for sure we had it longer than that. No, I remember two thousand because I remember right around that time MySpace was still around. So I was uploading some stuff on YouTube, <laughs> some stuff on MySpace. I already had a MySpace audience, so I was kind of yeah. like betting on MySpace, and then MySpace just so. <laughs> <laughs> went away and I just was like, gave up one day <laughs> yeah i was like what the fudge i should have just stuck with this new yeah so that was myspace basically did what burger king did where they just gave up they just stopped caring one day you know 
uh, like Little Caesars did the same thing where they were just like, nah, we're done. <laughs> and like Little Caesars started caring again and now they're kind of back. But Burger King just, <laughs> they're like, right. nah, we're tired of being number two. Uh, I used to love Burger King when I was a kid, man. Now I, it's like, it's, it's, it's a dare now to use their ketchup pump. Oh gosh. Ooh, you know, it's yeah. always just a nightmare. I went to one and I was like, can I have some salt for my French fries? They're like, we don't do salt anymore. And I was Whoa. like, well, what do you mean? You don't do salt anymore. You sell burgers and fries. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? Goes hand in hand, ketchup and salt and fries. Yeah. I was like, they were like, I don't know what to tell you. We don't have it. <laughs> and I was oh like, my okay. gosh. Isn't it funny? Uh, like sometimes there's, yeah, we went to a Chick-fil-A uh, about a month ago, and usually they're yeah. really like, my my pleasure, my pleasure. But the, you know, we did the the the, the thing where you go to the parking space to bring the food out, and we're and we're, this has yeah. happened a few times because they're so busy that they forget stuff, and then you get home, and you know they'll reimburse you on the app or and give you something else. But they um, we're like, oh, we're we don't see the whatever the item was, <clears throat> and then the 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 girl that works there just started. She goes, oh, let me check. And she just starts digging through our bag with her fingers. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you know this, but the French fries are exposed. And it was kind of like, oh, gosh, I hope she doesn't touch our French fries. Like, you know, yeah, it was a little too like, Ugh, you know, like, please don't do that. You know? Yeah. That, uh, yeah, I've had them forget stuff or give me the wrong thing altogether, you know. And, and it's like, I don't like to be a jerk, but usually at a place like that, you've had a specific thing in your mind for like an hour or so, you know, that you want to eat. And so if they give you like the chicken clubhouse by mistake or something like that, it's like, well, oh, that's not right. going to do it, yeah. <laughs> you know? And they're like, well, we'll just give you the, just take that. And it's like, I don't want it at all. <laughs> I want, the, I want the thing that I want, you know? I know. That was, uh, I remember there was a, I may have told this story before, but I'll say it again. I remember, I think last summer we were, you know, the, the, the lockdown shutdown was pretty heavy and I was, and so a lot of things were like closed and I was, I did a, uh, an outdoor show and I was, I was starving and I, you know, nobody, you know, my wife and son were up at the farm and I'm like, oh, let me just hit this Taco Bell drive through Well, guess what? It closed. Oh. And I'm like, dang, it closed. And then I was like, well, okay, I'll go near the Burbank airport. Cause those things are usually all, and all closed. And then I'm like, what? And then the more you start getting like that, which is bad. That's why you're not. You're supposed to, you know, have some emergency food in your car, like almonds or something. But and then, <laughs> and, then and then I was like, oh gosh, I'm so what the? F and then I I found that there was a McDonald's that was open, and I'm like, perfect. And I and right. I, went, I went to the McDonald's and and I told you I don't know if I told you, but I I got three things. It was like the thing that I had on my mind, whatever that was, like a quarter pounder or whatever. And then, they, uh -huh. and then I thought, man, that's, Oh, oh ooh, I'll get a fish fillet. Those are always good. And then they had this, I forget what it was. They had like a picture of something that looked really good. And I'm like, yeah, and I'll get one of those. And I was uh -huh. shocked at how expensive it was. Those three items were, yeah, you're looking at 35 bucks. Yeah, probably. dude. It was like, I was like, it was a lot of money. I thought it was going to be like, I don't know, 12 or $13. It was not, it was way more than that. It might well, have been, yeah. You're kind of insane about the Burbank Airport. You think they that they're <laughs> yeah. all their stuff is open twenty four hours, and it yeah. just isn't, Darren. It just I isn't. I know. <laughs> do, do you remember when you you were like, "Oh, we'll go to the Denny's over at the Burbank Airport"? I was like, "What are you talking about?" You were like, "That's gonna be great over there." <laughs> they were closed, and then. Well, we'll go to McDonald's. The McDonald's was closed. Everything oh, closed. Gosh. The only thing open. <laughs> The worst thing in the world, Del Taco. <laughs> yeah. The only thing open. I, I was know. fuming. I was so mad at you. And then, like, I go up, I follow you through the drive thru. Yeah. And they were like, oh, the guy in front of you felt bad about all of this. And so he paid for your Del Taco. And I was like, <laughs> thanks. Just give me it. Yeah. You know? I know. Oh, my gosh. Because it got worse. It started out like, let's go to <laughs> Bob's Big Boy. That sounds great. That's a right. 1950s yeah. diner. It's one of the oldest Bob's Big Boy that. Beatles have sat there. I mean, it's a great... If you guys ever go to Burbank... You yeah, got, and you, normally, you, yeah. To, to be fair to you, normally you would have been right. They would have been open that late. But on that particular day, they, there was some weird thing going on, and they weren't. Yeah, know? and they're like, sorry, we're closing. And we're like, oh, gosh. And then you were like, how about Denny's? And then the one that... The nearest one that was open was, you know... You didn't want to go to because you were afraid of it. 
Yeah, because I've seen, but there's like a block away. I, in fact, I drove by the other day. There's like just all these tents and people out there, and it's just you saw one guy wearing a Raiders hat. And you exactly, were like, gang members are going to be at. at yeah. They run that Denny's. They run that <laughs> Denny's. Hey, what's up, full moons over my pistol? No, I don't know. Um, they. Uh, yeah, so I was like, I go, let's go to the other Denny's. That one's safe. It's by the airport. You know, and then of course, no, no. I don't know what where that logic comes from. That things are safer by the airport. That's where the craziest stuff happens. You're right. <laughs> you know? Actually, I remember I went there one night and uh, like oh gosh, two years ago, same thing. I went to that because you know what the regular. Okay, so I I've I've kicked my uh, addiction to not addiction, but it kind of was to Del Taco. <laughs> there was a Del Taco. You had a Del uh, Taco addiction. The, I You're the only person that's ever <laughs> had that. Well, the one that I would go to was really good. They had the same cooks and chefs what they were there for years like de more than a decade i can guarantee you that i would recognize them and it was and, and it was that one's gone and now it's a starbucks but it was but it was one of those things where it was like so good and like the the food was fresh at that particular one because you're right i've gone to other ones out like on and they're never as good as the, the one that i used to go to and no uh, they're but they're all terrible they're all like I think, a I discount think, I version think, of Taco Bell. I think you would have liked that one, but we'll never know because it's now Starbucks. But it was it was really good. <laughs> we'll I mean, it never was, know. I mean, I, I know. I, remember, I know. I would not have liked it. I, I even saw the group Corn there. Remember Corn K O R N? Like you'd see like recording artists there because there's yeah. Of, that's exactly my point. Corn eats there. <laughs> Corn eats there. Yeah, you're dude. I saw Donnie. that's like an anti-commercial. I'm like I saw there. yeah. I saw Donnie Osmond Taco. and Pat Boone Corn eats here. I know. Yeah. <laughs> They, uh, I don't know if you heard what I said. I saw Donny Osmond and Pat Boone sharing a churro, bro. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's the worst. It's the like, worst. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, come to think of it, I don't think I saw any Mexicans or Mexican Americans there, but uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. They, everybody was there. It was a great, anyways, enough yeah. of this. It's so gone. you're saying it wasn't very authentic either, on top of. Yeah, it wasn't authentic. It was, yeah. I love that. Oh, the, but hey, listen, I kicked the habit. I'm no longer, I don't go there because it's gone. And so. I couldn't get over it. I was like, oh, I, I used to treat myself to like a Del Burrito or whatever. So then I, w I discovered the one in, by the airport. And mm -hmm. uh, one time I was, I, I went to the drive-thru and I wanted to eat before, you know, it got cold. But then I noticed this lady was going from car to car and it turns out, I'm pretty sure she was a prostitute. And then I just left and got out of there. So when you said, <laughs> it, it reminded me of what you said when you said it, it, it can be kind of seedy. Because I'm thinking yeah. that's the only thing I ever saw, but I did see that, and I remember it was kind of sh I was shocked. I was like, "What? Yeah, this is crazy." The, like, the Del Taco by the airport is kind of like that cantina in the first Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does, you're lucky no one tries to chop your arm off or something. You know? Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay. Next story. Okay, so that was the YouTube thing. I just wanted to say that it. I, that's why it started, and I was just—I was just thinking about my YouTube memories. What, and, wait, what is your go-to meal at Del Taco oh, when you when you're in the height of your addiction? What was your go-to thing? Oh, I would get oh the best the best times ever. It was the uh, <laughs> I mean they they just during the best times during the best times ever. It was the macho bacon and egg breakfast burrito. It was delicious. They made it 24 hours. The macho okay. and but then they stopped making the macho bacon and egg, and then they also did this other thing. It was a a shredded pork or chicken type of burrito thing and it would be kind of like moist inside like kind of like the tortilla would actually get kind of all their stuff was moist it was inside. so good though it was so good and then and then i uh sometimes i would i would get the del uh burrito or the burger the burger the first time i got Come to del taco it's moist inside and <laughs> exactly. corny too and corny too mm. and then they uh yeah, yeah, you knew it started going downhill when you had to like get the code to use the bathroom, and you're like, okay, this is uh, yeah, <laughs> this is not. Why am I hanging out here? But but before it was like this fun. Pl I mean, you'd see people working on scripts there and stuff, and <laughs> fun place. It was like a fun like, yeah. I oh, I loved it, and then they would occasionally introduce other, you know, like you know, two tamales. I remember or whatever they yeah. would put like what they called sour cream on everything. No matter what you ordered, and you'd be like, "Is this sour cream?" And they're like, "It's like sour cream." <laughs> By the way, we can't I, legally yeah. say that it's sour <laughs> cream. Yeah, it's. Uh, we just discovered. I just. We. Uh, I've been using sour cream this month. <laughs> like it really does make everything like nachos, burritos. It really adds that extra. You know, you feel like you uh, you're at a higher. You feel like you're at a higher <laughs> income bracket. It does add a little zip to it. Uh, it does. <laughs> it's like. 
<laughs> guys treat yourself just, just get get the sour cream just do it you know it's like i saw this meme where uh it was dr strange and uh he goes i'm the sorcerer supreme and then spider-man asks what makes him supreme and deadpool responded uh, a dollop of sour cream <laughs> a dollop because that is the big difference at Taco Bell. Is like I know it goes from a burrito to a burrito supreme if they put sour cream on it. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> I know. I think I told you because I tried to do this healthy option where they said substitute sour cream and use cottage cheese, and I was like, Nah, I'm not gonna. That is, sounds disgusting. Yeah. How would what would you think if I did? Hey, uh, hey, Mike. I made I made this uh, burrito. And then I, uh-huh. and then I, I would put, throw it at you. Exactly. Like, You'd yeah. like, hey, let's play dodgeball with burritos. With, with Get out of my trailer. You're of... not in the trailer. Get out. Yeah. Second news item I want to read you. Now listen to this. Eighth graders are given assignment to use pizza toppings as metaphors for sex acts. Now, the school, this is in Connecticut. Now, the school, the school said that they it was intended for high school kids, but even then, I think it's too young. You know, it's like it said. Okay, I'll just read the story. Those and, kids should be at a car wash. They shouldn't be. I know exactly. It's sex weird. pizzas, right? Because it's funny because I, you know, our son is an eighth grader, so I'm like, you don't, and you see, the, they're just children. It's like so. Anyways, so, so yeah. Or what? Didn't, like, let's say that it was like an adult party. You know that. Uh, that, okay. that might that might be more fun, like you know, you got to be thirty and above to come. But anyways. you know, an adult pizza party, <laughs> like we always have. Yeah, uh, here we go. Pizza toppings as metaphors for sex acts, including olives. That equals giving oral. Uh, it says uh, eighth graders, wow. blah blah blah, Connecticut. It it asks students to list their favorite pizza toppings and use those as a metaphor for their favorite. The assignment was quickly deleted from the school district website, but frustrated parents lashed out, which I understand, and they said it was a mistake. Um, yeah, we yeah. Can, yeah, it's it's just weird. Like, and besides, you know, come on, who's gonna, you know what I mean? It's like a, I I think yeah, it's it sounds like a a mistake, but um, at still, it's like God, proofread your email yeah. before you send them out yeah cheese cheese you know? equals kissing uh olives equals giving oral once the metaphor was complete the the eighth graders were asked to draw and color your favorite type of pizza who's your favorite <laughs> i don't know why they did this this is crazy but i mean even it sounds high- just insane I know. it sounds like something that you would get off an adult website or like some kind of like fun bachelor yeah party, like, you know or you have to wonder how it came up uh you know because things like this <clears throat> they have to go through at least two pairs of eyes, I would think. Yeah. You know, to, to come up with it and then send the email. I know. mean, we're two comedians and we're like dancing around this going, ah, yeah, you know, it's it like, just imagine yeah. why, you know, but like also the, who now did the kids decide that olives meant oral or did the teacher decide this? <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> it was, like, was yeah. Was the teacher just telling? Just so you guys know, uh, olives are oral, and yeah. uh, Jesus is kissing. I it passed was... out piles of olives to certain students. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, it's like uh, the cheerleaders understand that uh, extra cheese means extra kissing. <laughs> you know? like, what are you talking about? You insane, crazy fuck! You know, know that just makes no sense. We didn't do any but, of that in, in, in any of my grades. You know, none of this kind of stuff. No, I mean, no. I think there and, was yeah, and I think it's also it's like. Sex education, I'm all for it. I think everyone should have it. It lowers disease and teen pregnancy and all that sort of stuff. However, <laughs> it's complicated enough without metaphors. Yeah. I don't think you need to throw pizza into the mix, you know. I know. It's like, yeah. It's like, uh... <laughs> I know. Pizza is reserved for car washes, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know. Right, yeah, the yeah. nice, pure way that I do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Dude. This I know. This this podcast took a turn. You're like, wait a second. Earlier, I just said I would pay some teens with with pizza. No, you're gonna you're gonna sully my name and Chuck E. Cheese's name. And, <laughs> exactly. You know, I know. It's not it's not cool. Not, that that poor rat in the stadium. That exactly. Was, was like he was trying to lure teens with that slice of pizza. <laughs> you remember that yeah, YouTube yeah, clip? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I know YouTube. I know that's what horny guys will do. They're like, we got to create a YouTube so we can watch this video of Janet Jackson's. <laughs> like, there, and also, I, I, I can't believe it's 2005 and we don't have a place where we can watch teens discuss pizza. <laughs> I, I remember um, another reason I knew that the YouTube, back to the YouTube thing in 2005, so, is uh, Kevin Shea. I don't know if you're familiar with comedian Kevin Shea. I am familiar. He, he has a great joke uh, where he apparently went to college uh, with with one of the guys that created YouTube. I guess there was two guys, and he went to school with one of them. And he would do a joke about, you know, how, how they went to lunch. And the whole time, he's just thinking, are you going to pay for this lunch or not? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, you're a billionaire. Like, oh, like, who's paying or whatever? Shouldn't even be a question. I think all, anyone with like 20 million plus is paying for lunch. Right. Just automatically. Yeah, I know. Every rich person should be like George Clooney, where you yeah. know what he did, where he, no, like, he tell took us. His, his 20 best friends and just gave them each a million dollars. Wow. And he, and it's not, not, that's not only nice for them, that helps out the economy so much when no. all of a sudden, instead of one multimillionaire, there's 21 millionaires out there. <laughs> Right, you know that are each they're each going to do all sorts of crazy stuff. But if you just give someone a million dollars, the chances of them doing charity with it, with like a portion of it, and being like grateful and responsible with it, are much much higher. And I'm, you know? I'm sure, especially the people that you know that George Clooney chose to give the million dollars to you know what i mean like he knows these guys he knows what their struggles were these women these guys whatever it's like right i'll never forget one time i was in a del, del taco drive through and there was a car behind me I yeah said, i've got this <laughs> right and i'm sure the car behind you was grateful and went out the next day and <laughs> yeah. did some charity work and stuff yeah yeah, uh, yeah. i need to earn this <laughs> i need to earn this darren carter he bought me two shitty burritos and <laughs> hey but you know what though the the I was going to say the poor times. But I was thinking maybe I could help you guys, you know, carve the turkey or, you know, <laughs> ladle out yeah. mashed potatoes. We only do that once a year. Well, okay, call me on that day and I'll come back. I think one of the, I don't know, I just had this thought. I think one of the keys to happiness is to really enjoy, you know, the silver lining still. Because that night was one of um, a very memorable night for me. Hopefully it was really for enjoy you. Really enjoy Silver it, it, linings playbook. Yeah. No, I mean, like, you know, we could have been inside of the, Bob's big boy, like if it would open regular hours, and it, and we, it may be a memorable right. night. Instead, but instead, we were eating Del Taco on the hood of our cars. Yes, we had like you know, I think you know the hoods of our cars, the trunks, and you know, and we're just out there shooting the breeze in a parking lot, and you know, at like <laughs> midnight, it was fun. It was a very memorable hoping we night. wouldn't get knifed by prostitutes. <laughs> exactly, and they're pimps. It is our territory. Yeah. Take that shit down to Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Go to that expensive McDonald's you talked about, but that was a fun night. I don't know. I, I uh, yeah. occasionally it is nice to just eat fast food on the trunk of your car with the buddy hanging out under the, <laughs> under the stars and the airplanes landing. Sure. <laughs> wow, that turned into a broke back moment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> broke back airport. <laughs> broke back airport. Um, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I, I love, I gotta do one more thing. Okay. I gotta, I gotta tell you about this. So this is a. Uh, Buckle up, everybody. We, uh, I think I told you on uh, the previous episode you were on, or the one before that, that I happened to watch. Uh, that I'm, I'm, I only watched one episode of uh, the Waltons, and, and the one episode I saw was good, the other two were boring. I'm done with the Waltons. I mean, uh, for at least for now. <laughs> wow, maybe I know they're hot and cold on the Waltons. I'm hot and cold on the Waltons. You're right, because you go, hey, it's a fake version of Little House on the Prairie. Now, I do remember Little House on the Prairie, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, so I'm stumbling around, and I uh, we and I've I've seen about six episodes. And I got to be honest, every episode is either great or good. And I just watched an episode last night. I'm going to skip the the parts that might be boring of <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. I'm going to get right. to, This is a really good part. Um, well, I love, by the way, I love your take on it because you probably either haven't seen the episode or don't remember. But this yeah. is from season one, episode two, I believe. And um, by the way, I'm going to start with the pilot. I am going to. You know, I, I recorded the pilot. The, I mean, it's it's really good. Um, so, there we go. I was going to tell you that. So what happens is, the, you know, the the family they move to this little town in Walnut Creek, and then yeah, 
And so the and the, this this episode was called Country Girls, and they go to the school and they're nervous. They the one little girl pretends to be sick, you know, the Melissa Gilbert character, and she's like, mm-hmm. I don't want to go to school, Pa. And he's like, You talk, ah, I go to school, you you know, you'll be okay, but you'll meet some friends. They they walk in and they, they immediately the kids start making fun of them, calling them long legged snipes. Snipe, snipe, <laughs> snipe, snipe, start making fun of them. And then Nellie Olson, remember the school bully with the little pigtails? She, sure. She's perfectly cast. She looks so mean. And she looks at them and she goes, country girls, country girls, and just makes fun of them. like they. What a jerk. Yeah, like that they're poor and they're from the country. And then, of course, her family is really, you know, pretty wealthy and they own like the store that everyone buys their goods from. And it yeah. was... Uh, and in fact, one part of the episode, the mom goes to sell eggs, and then the lady is very snooty. The mom is uh, the the woman, the uh, Oscar, you know, Nellie's Most mom. Most moms are. Yeah, and she was like, she's like, oh, these are brown eggs. Oh, those are cheaper. Hmm. I'm paying four cents less a dozen, which I didn't know. I don't know. Are are brown eggs more expensive? I thought they would be more expensive. Brown eggs. Nowadays, they're more expensive. That means they're country fresh. Basically, they have and they haven't been overly processed and yeah because I, I know uh i know a friend of mine he, he prefers brown eggs i don't know if i would even know the difference in taste maybe i would i don't i don't i don't know i i think and i may be wrong but i think they're more organic you know they they don't like yeah can't meddle with them that much once they come out the, straight straight out of the chicken's body and onto your plate. I know exactly. <laughs> Paraphrase an old kids in the hall bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fun. I'm getting hungry by the way. I haven't not eaten yet. All this del taco and egg talk, but uh so yeah, I'll even eat that chicken that it came out of. But uh <laughs> So there's a part where they, they have they do a school speech, right? The it's like it'd be like the back to school night with all the parents and all the children. And uh uh-huh. so Nellie gets up and this I, I she is such a braggart. She's like, this This speech is called, My Home. And I have the script. My Home. Okay. My Home is the best house in all of Walnut Grove. We have carpets in every room. <laughs> Botten carpets. We have three sets of dishes. One for every day. One for Sunday. And one for when someone, for when someone who is special and very important comes to visit which was never even used yet. We have real lace curtains and six genuine oil paintings and six genuine oil paintings. And I have my own room and Willie has his own. All of our furniture is bought in two and it costs a whole lot. If I told you how much, you'd probably faint dead away. But my (coughs) Pa Olson's mercantile says talking about how much things cost isn't proper. But it costs dear, I can tell you that. And it's the <laughs> nicest furniture of any furniture in any house in all of Walnut Grove. Thank you, Nelly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and I'm telling you, just Nelly like, out. <laughs> everyone's just yeah, Nelly out, mic drop. It just yeah, she doesn't have a mic though. So she's like, <laughs> yeah. like number two pencil drop. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Tin can drop. <laughs> Tin can drop, yeah. Exactly. She, I mean, she looked nice. She had like her really fancy dress on, and the pigtails, and the fancy bonnet, and all that. You know, whatever. And what then, a shithead. Yeah, she exactly. Like. I know. And then, and then it's like, you know, you already know there's this animosity between her and the little girl Laura Ingalls character, and uh, yeah. and so boom, who's next? Laura. Ingalls. The teacher's like, "Thank you, Nelly." And now we'll hear from Laura Ingalls. And we already know Laura can barely. We don't got much, but we all love each other, and we all. <laughs> yeah, you do it. You do it. You do it. What do you think will happen? <laughs> share. A, we had. I've been. I wear my sister's pants because she's grown out of them now. And when I'm done with them, uh, little Maggie June will get them. <laughs> you know. And, uh, we we don't have much between us, but we all chip in and make a stew every night. And uh, <laughs> Paul reads us from the good book, and then we all uh, snuggle together for warmth because we can't afford blankets. Come on, dude. You know, you, you, you know you saw this episode, dude. No, I didn't <laughs> no, see this episode. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, she gets up, and, and we the, the viewers already know <laughs> that she, she... We all share it. Onion and shoe leather soup. <laughs> all, the, all the viewers. We're sitting there eating toilet paper soup and uh, no. Yeah. They, uh, 
No, the viewers already know that because earlier in she said that she she can put letters together, but she has a hard time spelling, and she's she's you know her her spelling is all like. You know, <laughs> cat, pat, pat. I love when someone tells you something and then tells you the exact opposite. Uh, right, right. I, 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 I can't spell, but I can put my letters together. Well, no, you can't then. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it's one or the other. <laughs> yeah. She, um, so, so we're, you know, we're like, oh my God, how's she going to follow that? So she goes uh, up right. there. She goes up there. <laughs> We've got two toilets. Is that true? No. No. <laughs> No, we've got an outhouse on the west side of our house and an outhouse on the east side. I had to find a badger for my laundry. <laughs> yeah. We've got brown <laughs> eggs and brown teeth. No, I don't know. She, um, <laughs> she, uh, so she goes up. Hers is called My Mother. She, mm -hmm. she goes up there. My sister Mary is going to tell you how Pa bought us, brought us west and how hard he worked. And I don't mean to take anything from him by telling you, Ma worked plenty hard herself. Still does. She cooks and sews and cleans. She takes care of the lot of us, Pa included. I remember once when I was little, coming down with the fever. Ma sat up next to me all night. I slept some, but she never, ever. And any time I'd open my eyes, she'd be there smiling, holding a cold cloth to my head. Now with me and Mary sprouting up, which is what Ma calls it. If there's at least a littlest noise in the night, Ma would come climbing up the ladder onto the loft to make sure we were all right. I reckon there's times she gets bone tired, but you'd never know it. Her smile is the last thing I see before I close my eyes at night and the first thing I want to see in the morning. She's been selling eggs to the mercantile and saved enough to buy good yards by yards good to make herself a new dress. This morning, Mary and me found out she made dresses for the two of us instead. That's because she loves us. That's the kind of mother Ma is. And that's why we love her so much. Thank you, Laura. And that was it. Well, I'm bone tired from just hearing that. <laughs> I know. And then, and then, so they go outside and, and the, um, you know, the, the, everyone, the, 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 everyone disperses and then the mom goes, she goes, now, Laura, I know that's not what you wrote because, and she's like, I know, mom, I, I, I just, and then she goes, well, you better go tell the teacher. So she went and told the teacher and she had to show her her paper, what she really wrote. And it was very simple. It was like, ma cooks, ma sews, we love ma. But she didn't <laughs> want to have to follow Nellie, which is something simple like that. So she did some extemporaneous speaking and. Dude, when they put music to it, <laughs> the music. And you the, cried like a little bitch. Didn't well, you? well, I'm not going to admit that on this podcast, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you'll watch that. Not you, but maybe you. I don't know. I love this. <laughs> no. I wanna, oh, dude, we got to film you watching Little House and see if you can like, hold back the tears. <laughs> That's the thing, too. I don't know if I was single if I'd be watching Little House, but I... There's just something about getting older too, and then you're watching it from a different perspective. And there's like, yeah, yeah it's like, you know, like, yeah. Darren, it's it's different. It, at my house, we had four limousines <laughs> and all the Encyclopedia Britannicas. <laughs> and every morning we would have breakfast lobster <laughs> and uh, champagne <laughs> before I. Uh, was uh, driven to middle school uh, where I, I was I would go to school in a top hat and tails <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't go for an education it was mostly to just point at the poor you're like when I'm so, not at our home in I Denver we were in out of it that yeah. you got <laughs> yeah. you're like we travel between Vail Denver Aspen yeah. every now and again I would clap my hands and one of my many ponies would show up oh and, gosh and then I would ride it around the poor children. Uh, my mom would make me initial on my lunch tickets in case the bullies tried to snatch one from me. <laughs> uh, true story, true story. I really I, uh, <laughs> I've been on both ends of the lunch ticket debacle. Where I have bullied someone out of a lunch ticket, and I've been bullied out of a lunch ticket. <laughs> I used to, I remember then I got wise and I, yeah, this is, oh dude, this is how much money. Oh gosh. I used to sell my lunch tickets for 50 cents so I could go get some cookies in the uh, cafeteria. <laughs> like, Cause the good ones had the M&Ms in them. Mm. <laughs> sell your lunch tickets. 
I know. I remember, dude, this is how much things didn't cost. Okay, so I uh, I remember I, oh, I was in seventh grade. And at that time, we used to play basketball in the neighborhood, you know? And, uh, I, and all the neighbors, so I, let's say I was 11. All the neighbors were like nine and under. So I was probably the best basketball player on our neighborhood. Right, uh -huh. and a little cul-de-sac, you know, we had a little, you know, thing on above the, you know, the garage. So I'm like, I like basketball. Basketball is fun. I want to be a basketball player. I'm going to join the basketball team. So in seventh grade, I joined the basketball team. Uh, I was the shortest player, the least experienced player, the the, the most um, palest player, if you know what I mean. And uh, I do. And I really enjoyed. Uh, the only thing I enjoyed in basketball was the warm-up exercises, the jumping jacks, <laughs> the push-ups, the they called it suicides. You run real fast. You know, that part I like because I was like, oh, that's just physical fitness and exercise. Actually, <laughs> playing basketball, I hated because everyone knew like these terms like alley oop and whatever. I don't even know the terms, but they, they yeah, all the codes. Yeah, all the codes. They knew how to really play basketball. I knew how to play like stupid like neighborhood church basketball yeah. or whatever. Like just it's Sunday school, but whatever. And um, but sadly. My, I remember my mom would not let me quit the basketball team because she's like, I spent, and this is a lot, I guess a lot of money, I don't know, back then. I spent $35 on those basketball shoes. You are not quitting. And I was like, ugh. But it was okay. My dream came true because two weeks later, they kicked me off. <laughs> so, yeah, two weeks later, I remember, like, I had to survive that for two weeks before they were like, okay, we're sadly, we're making cuts. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. And just to give you a, an idea of how little I was, the following year, which would be eighth grade, I was on the wrestling team and I w wrestled in the 105 pound division. Wow. So I weighed 105 pounds in eighth grade. So who knows what I, I probably weighed like 90 pounds in seventh grade. I mean, it was, yeah. Yeah. That's rough. Uh, yeah. I, that happened to me once where I, <laughs> Just for fun, I was like, hey, I told one of my friends who was a little more athletic than I was, I was like, hey, let's go play basketball over at the, the park. And so we go there, and I realized very quickly that we had never really played any sort of sports together before, <laughs> and he just wrecked me at basketball. <laughs> it was just, just, it was like a, a total shutout, <laughs> and I was like, he knows all the tricks and all the different stuff. Right. That I don't, yeah. You know, I was like, I thought we were just, it was going to be like with my brother where we would just, you know, have fun. But he was like competitive. And I was like, oh no, this is not what I wanted at all. Uh, yeah. I remember at one point, I think somebody either passed the ball to me and I missed it or I took a shot and I missed it. And I remember like, as everybody ran to the back to the other, to go chase the ball to the other end of the court, I remember this one guy that was on my team. He just he just looked at me real mean and goes and he goes, "I already don't like you." Yeah, I already <laughs> passed on it. I was like, I, I, but, I get like it. there were like little tricks too, like yeah. things like when someone would make a shot and people would jump up for the ball. Yeah, I jumped up first, and he jumped up kind of like to knock me out of the way. Yeah, so that he could grab. And I was like, "Oh, that seems like cheating," but I guess it's cool right to do that like but i you know it's like a lot of little things like that that i i learned a lot yeah when they stick day. their butt out or something and, you're, and yeah because you're always i was always taught like hey i thought basketball was a no contact sport and it doesn't no they yeah it's totally a contact yeah, sport they move the their hips a certain way and they box you out yeah. and you can't yeah and i was like okay this is i learned a lot but i don't like this i didn't want to do this with a friend you know, Dude, like, I, yeah, and I, I, I probably look like uh, John Travolta in Greece when he tries out for different sports. Right, like, yeah. You know, I, uh, I remember even when I joined the swim team in, in 11th grade, I remember swimming because, you know, they had like the Olympic size swimming pool. And I remember I was I remember swimming halfway and then just like walking the rest of the way. Yeah. And, um, and they were like, the guy was whistling, Darren, no, you got to swim. And I didn't realize, oh, we have to swim the whole way? Like I didn't. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, I just, I, I basically could ha like kind of swim, but I really learned how to swim, uh, you know, for the, like the first month and then I got better. And then I, I finally made the, gym, right. you know, the, yeah, I got to do JV and then I got to swim varsity. Um, the, I, and I, I, looking back, I don't know if, uh, if I was that fast or they just had no one to do that. 
And it was uh, the, 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 <laughs> it was the only guy that showed up. Yeah, it was the backstroke. I, they had me do the backstroke. Like everyone else was like freestyle or butterfly or the. I think stroke. that's how they're setting settling a lot of the Olympics. Is <laughs> just oh, you showed up, so you get the silver. Uh, yeah, you showed up. Nobody would have got gold, but a guy's already here. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, oh, here's a good question. I just thought of since we're neither one of us are really like athlete, like professional athletes or even that good at being athletic. If there was if there was one sport, someone said I'll pay you ten million dollars to get kind of good at it, the good the best that you can be at. What would you train from now for the next year to be? What sport would that be? Uh, probably if it counts as a sport, uh, it would be pool. Like shooting. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Billiards. Because then it, that's a skill that you can take with you after the Olympics are over and you could still make money, you know, mm. oh, I'm gonna, pretty easily. Oh, wow. I'm going to, can I use that same answer? I think I would do the same. <laughs> well, thanks, Darren. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Cause everything uh, else is like, even when I go to the box, I mean, yeah. bowling would be another one, you know, that yeah. I, basically ones that you can play in bars, you know, <laughs> and still bet yeah. on and stuff, you know, darts. Oh, I was just going to say darts, shuffleboard. Fencing, uh, no. you know, if you live in a place where you can carry a sword around with you, that would be good. Uh, I was going to say, when I go to the boxing gym, I, you know, a lot, a lot of the guys there are pros preparing mm -hmm. for fights, like they're in fight camp. And then even when they're not in fight camp, they're still training. And I, I saw a couple of guys sparring the other day, but they were like amateurs. Like they're not, they weren't the pros. They were mm -hmm. probably like in their early 20s and they're, they want to be amateur fighters. Like, like right. so, you know, that's how you start. And I watched the first round, and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool. Like, they had the headgear and the protection. And they were yeah. sort of at arm's length. A lot of a lot of the punches were missing and when they did punch. But that was the first round. Uh, they fought four rounds. And by the third and fourth round, I was like, I don't want any part of that. I mean, these guys were like, <laughs> bam, 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 headshots. And then, like, all close to each other. Like, just, it looked nasty. And I was like, okay, screw that, man. That doesn't, that doesn't look yeah. fun at all. Like, the first round, it looked like patty cake. <laughs> like, like, sure. Oh, I, po <laughs> right. oh, I poked you. I'm over here now. I mean, it didn't look. But know. yeah, when you see like a a real professional boxer up close take a real hit to the face, like where the other guy put all they've got, Gosh. like their whole body into it, and they don't even flinch because they're so used to getting hit in the yeah. face. Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't have whatever that takes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a way I don't like to make a living, you know. I haven't yeah, like yeah. you see like a sparring partners where they're like, okay, now go full contact this time. And they'll hit the sparring partner who's just a, an old like pro boxer. And you'll see guys just, they're like, oh, I'm going to put a hurting on this dude. And they'll hit as hard as they can. They'll use their favorite punch. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and still the guy's just like, whatever. You know, I'm fine. I know, it's like, man. I I did not have that. By the way, are you good at? Are you pretty good at billiards? Or, or... uh, billiards? Or I pool? have never actually played, but pool, I'm okay at. Is there a difference? Yeah, billiards is an older. A lot of people don't know this. They think billiards is pool, but billiards is actually a game on a red felt table oh. that does not have pockets. Oh geez, um, and it's a geometry game. It's there. I believe there's one white ball and two red balls. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, and you have to like hit them in a certain order in a certain way. And there was a guy. I I'm not sure if it was Willie Moscone or someone else, but in the like late '60s, he was so good at it that it destroyed it as a sport. Mm. like there was just no competition uh you know no one was ever going to beat him and it was just kind of like oh, that, that guy is the best there's ever been and ever will be <laughs> and and it kind of destroyed billiards and so now there's just pool <laughs> because yeah, they're like, yeah, it, yeah. pool was like a lot of people were really good at it but a lot of people even the great ones lost every now and again Whereas billiards, that guy literally perfected the game and, yeah. and destroyed it in doing so. It's kind of, it's interesting. It's similar to what happened with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger 
oh, with the uh, Mr. Universe. Yeah, yeah, uh, where I think that's what it was called, Mr. Universe. But um, he had won six years in a row. And they were like, this sport is done. It's it's over. And everyone who's been doing it is just going to have to pack it in. Then Lou Ferrigno came out of nowhere. And he was kind of like the dark horse in the running. And they were like, okay, well, let's do a documentary. They did that Pumping Iron, uh, yeah. the movie about it. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, but... Uh, they did that whole movie about the two of them facing off. And it's, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but it's extraordinary because at one point in the movie, they're talking to Arnold and they go, uh, tell us, uh, what's next for Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he lays out the next 20 years of his life and it all happened. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like, then I'll probably get into movies in America, and then I'm gonna try and move into politics, and you know, <laughs> I'll get married around that time, and then you know, and he just like lays out his whole future, <laughs> and all of it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see also that he's like such a brilliant manipulator, where they have to share training quarters, like even though they're in competition. And Lou Ferrigno's father was his trainer. Mm. And what Arnold would do, this is so messed up. He would go over to Lou Ferrigno's dad while they were training and go, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Come here. And mm -hmm. the guy would go over, uh, what's the matter, Arnold? And he goes, uh, I'm really worried about Lou. You know, he's, he's got these bags under his eyes and he's, it, it doesn't seem like his heart's in it, you know, and <laughs> I just worry for him, not for, for me or anything, but uh, are you feeding him the right food? Are you giving him enough vitamins and everything? Cause it just looks, I'm concerned <laughs> for his health really. Yeah. And it seems like he's being very considerate and very like nice to his competitor. Right. Right. Lou Ferrigno is deaf. Oh, so him whispering didn't matter. Hmm. What did matter that Arnold knew was that Lou Ferrigno was reading his lips. And so he could see him saying these things to his dad. And not only that, he could see his dad going, yeah, I'm worried about Lou also. I don't know if he's going to do okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I better get him more vitamins and stuff like that. Thanks for thinking of us and everything. And so for, he got in Ferrigno's head really deep and just kind of destroyed him before the competition even started. Mm. So it it's crazy to watch it, if you if you ever get a chance to watch it. You know, I've never, it's funny when you say that about the talking trash. I've never been, you know, into talking trash. The closest I'll come is maybe with a board game, barely with a board game with my son. <laughs> yeah. I'll barely, but I, I don't like doing that. I'm just not that, you know, I don't like to do that. You know, I just don't, you don't like it. You don't, you don't want to win. You don't yeah, I don't want to win. win. I don't want to win. I want, to, like, I want both teams to have fun. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of like that. Too. I don't really, so, I feel like. I only get competitive when someone has actually wronged me in right. some way. Yeah. That's the only time I want to like show them up at something. Yeah. Like but, I remember yeah. in, <laughs> this is so stupid, but a friend of mine in college got kind of screwed over by this person. And I ran into the person at a party and they were like, uh, Hey, I, I, we have a mutual friend and I was like, yeah, we do. And I was like, just trying to avoid the guy. And he goes, uh, I, I heard you're pretty good at golden. I were playing that in the other room. And I was like, Oh, are you? <laughs> I'll go in that room. <laughs> and so like we go in and, uh, he was like, Oh, we're, we're putting like penny a point on like for whoever wins. And I was like, well, let's make it interesting. Let's do, I don't know, a dollar a point. And he was like, oh, that sounds good. And I was like, and why don't we crank it up a little bit? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, rather than the way the game is normally set up where some, it takes like several bullets to kill your opponent, yeah. I was like, why don't we do one-shot kills? And he was like, what's that? And I was like, 
where if you hit the target at all, it kills them. And the points rack up real quick, though, and he was like, yeah, I could do that. That's cool. <laughs> I beat him 67 to 5. Wow. <laughs> and in college, that's like a million dollars, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're walking around. Oh, man. Uh, we're, I didn't realize we've done an hour, over an hour. Uh, You've done over an hour. That's right. Let's do... Um, like I said, if there's a demand, we'll do another one. But you know what, though? It's already middle of the week. Let's let's save this for the next episode. You guys, go watch, if you get a chance, Magnificent 7, the original 1960 version. Cause yeah. I, I want to hear all about it with Mike. I saw it once, and I've been watching clips again. And it's a, man, that is that is a Western. It's a really fun it's a, movie. <laughs> it's a you fun know. movie. And it's, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it. I'll tell you one little thing, just Please. because I've been watching yeah. reruns of it is the movie. Uh, I've been watching reruns of Cheers, mm. but it's the movie that back then you had to wait for a movie to show on TV if you didn't own it on VHS or it wasn't, you know, yeah. in the theaters. And that was the movie that they would all drop everything for and go home and watch at one of them's place oh. whenever it was playing. And they would sing the theme song on their way out of the bar wow. to go watch it. The theme you know, song of the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. What is the theme song? It's or, it's or, instrumental, oh, but it's like yeah. da 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 you, you, da 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 da. Yeah, exactly. You that's know? it. It's funny when you see like an iconic movie with someone who's because I, I watched it with a buddy. And uh -huh. you know he it, it's 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 like watching who, probably who like, this other buddy that you have well this great <laughs> awesome buddy this awesome buddy no it was a it, uh <laughs> it was in Texas it's a it's a comedy club owner but he's you know I'd say he's a buddy but he's no Mike Black I'll good maybe much. he should do your podcast then <laughs> yeah, exactly what if you just hung up no but no you guys are so in love with each other <laughs> yeah that was uh, <laughs> it, it that was like a great movie then he showed me a, a few other movies and i was but that was the best one that was the yeah yeah that was the man but he, yeah it was kind of cool because i could tell it was what it'd be like when you watch a movie with someone that people have uh you know like jaws or something like most yeah. most normal people have seen and i just had never seen it so he was like that's yul brenner and that's he knew all the different characters and the same thing with that song and all that yeah stuff. we're like when it really lives up to the hype, too, that someone has built up about it, you know? Yeah, because there was another movie, and maybe, it, you know, I'm sure it's a great movie, but I, it was just, I was too late at night, man. It was like one in the morning. What was the other movie? I'll tell you. And it's probably, it's like another classic movie people love, but it just, I wasn't, I was just too tired. I only got about 26 minutes in, then I just called it a night. It was t uh, 12 Angry Men. Oh, God. Yeah, that's, that's not a late night sort of movie yeah. at all. Yeah, it was like this. It's black, literally yeah. jury duty. The movie, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know? was, yeah. They were, and I could see like they're talking real fast back and forth. And well, I think the guy did. And well, I think the guy. Well, come on, how do you know yeah. he was innocent? Well, I think you're. Yeah. It's like Glenn Gary Glenn Ross is a brilliant movie, but it's not something you watch after like ten o'clock. Right. You know, it's yeah. it's all salesmen being mad about being sales. <laughs> yeah. That that's a daytime activity. That's not like. A late night movie is something like, I don't know, Men in Black or Pulp Fiction or some something lively with a lot of action. Yeah. You know, uh, Big Trouble in Little China is a perfect late night movie, you know, something like that that has like enough action and comedy to keep it interesting, you know? Yeah, yeah. when it's just a lot of dialogue back and forth and you're not really emotionally connected and you're just like... Yeah. I mean, it was interesting seeing the way they talk, the way they dress, the different, you know, famous actors. A, a good metric for a late night movie is if there's a... Ch if you look at the cover and you look at the stars in it and you think there is at least a 50-50 chance that they're going to try and blow up a bridge... <laughs> then it's a good late night yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, I looked up, um, gosh, see, I, that's why I want to talk about this next episode, but you know the main bad guy in Magni Magnificent Seven, the guy with the red shirt, Caldonas, I think his name is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I can't remember. His name actor, is like, yeah. yeah, we'll look it up next time. His name is like, the actor is like, I think his name is like Eli. He's a famous guy, but. Is it uh, Eli Wallach? Yes. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, so yeah so I that, haven't seen it in a while. So he, 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 um, 
I only know him from the like I only know some of these people from this movie. Like so mm-hmm. I only know him as that character. And I was like, wow, he's so believable and so good. And then and then so then I went I went on, you know, YouTube and I looked him up on a you know, like a late night appearance doing an interview. And I'm like, wow, he doesn't talk anything like that. And of course, you know, I saw it you know yeah. forty years later what he looks like now and this and that. But it was that was interesting, man. He did a well, we'll talk about this movie later, but man, that's uh you guys go check out Magnificent Seven. Uh, or even like the movie clips because they're on YouTube. If you just want to see some of the highlights, if you've already seen the movie, and you'll be like, "Oh yeah, that," you know. That's yeah, but watch the original. Like, I'm not saying that the new one is bad, but watch the original first. Right. You know. Yeah. And uh, although, if you want to get really, really original, watch uh, the Seven Samurai first. But <laughs> yeah. But I would I would start with the Magnificent Seven. That's a. a the most fun version of the story. Yeah, because the reason I wanted to do that is as, as I was like, you know what, I, I want to see some of the, you know, like I want to see where like, you know, a guy like Charles Bronson, like I, you know, like why they became Charles Bronson or why did this person become who they are? I want to see them, you know, a little bit of their movie history, like what made them, you know, their progression, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because that was kind of, for a lot of those guys, that was the big... Uh, movie that started them started off their kind of brand you know exactly all right mike you're the best thanks for hanging out with us and you guys thanks for listening and and thanks for being a part of the pocket party podcast Uh, any words of wisdom on the way out any any pocket sense for our listeners Um, you've learned along the way be kind rewind (laughs) i think it's very important because they'll stick you with fees Oh, yeah. If you don't. Yeah, you don't want those fees, guys. You do not want those fees. And remember, go just get the sour cream. Don't go with cottage cheese. Just treat yourself. Yeah. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. <laughs> exactly. Mike, you're the best. I'll, I'll talk to you soon and hopefully you'll we'll uh you know, we'll do another one next week and we'll jump on some other cool stuff. If you guys have any ideas, anything you'd like us to talk about, uh leave a comment below. Thank you so much. All right. See you. All see right. you, Mike. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. That's right, Mike Black. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for sharing part of your day with us. And if you want to help the show out any way you can, one way is go on Cameo. I'm available for personalized video shout outs. Cameo. I'm also on the Cash App, dollar sign Darren Carter Comic. I'm on Venmo at Darren Carter Comic. And uh, I'm also on PayPal. Go to DarrenCarter.com. Hit that donate button. You guys are awesome. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for starting that party in your ear holes. Everybody listen to Darren Carter. We all know he's the party starter. So if you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to the Pocket Party.